Hey guys, it's Ben, Acme Moen, Acme Moen and Lawn Care, acmemoen.com. How's it going? Happy Saturday to you. Hope you had a great week. Uh, I hope you had a great year and I hope you were good this year because uh, right around the corner, uh, before our next video even comes out, Santa's on his way. Uh, I got my, my stocking all hung up and ready to go. Uh, I lined it with plastic because I figure I'm gonna get some coal this year. I kind of deserve it, uh, but we won't go into that. This is supposed to be PG-13 uh, channel and uh, we try to keep it PG as much as possible. Okay guys, first let me tell you uh, that we decided on what kind of trailer that we want and I'm gonna tell you why. Uh, we want a seven by 16 trailer. Uh, and I know a lot of you guys are saying, uh, you should go with eight foot, it's much better. I know, uh, but the thing is, is we drove down some of the neighborhoods that we're gonna be pulling that trailer around in and, and, and in Oklahoma, uh, in those neighborhoods, people tend to park on both sides of the road. And it's pretty tight, even with a six and a half foot trailer, it can get kind of tight. With a seven foot trailer, it's even tighter. And then eight foot trailer, I don't know. I don't want to, I don't even want to go there. So as it turns out, a seven foot trailer will meet our needs. Uh, but we went with the 16 foot. You're probably asking yourself, Ben, you already got a 14 foot, uh, you got a 14 foot trailer. Um, if you just remove that uh, landscaping cage on the front, you free up that whole 14 foot. That's the problem, guys, is is with, we, we did our measurements and uh, it looks like we need at least 15 feet. So even if I did take that uh, landscaping rack off the front of it, that still leaves us a foot short. So, and they really don't make 15 foot trailers. Uh, so 16 foot is our is our length. Uh, it just came down through through natural deduction and, and uh, you know, organics. It's, a, it's what we gotta do. So we're gonna get a seven by 16. So we have it narrowed down. Uh, we do know that we want a tandem axle. We want a brake on one of those axles. We want a bulldog hitch and we want a four foot at least drop gate in the back. We don't want the side drop gate because we never use it. Just another thing to break. So we know exactly what we want. Uh, we don't care about whether it's angle iron or pipe rail top. We, that doesn't matter to us. What we're looking for now is a good deal on a seven by 16 foot trailer. Uh, really, that's what it's coming down to. We'd like two foot sides, and uh, if we have to pay extra for the meshing on that two foot, we're gonna do that at the suggestion of some of our viewers, and it's a great suggestion too. Uh, so we're gonna do that. Uh, but the, here's the problem, guys. So the boy, uh, my wife texted the boy this morning and said, hey, your dad is, is getting ready to come pick you up uh, to go the trailer shopping, be ready. Uh, he texted back and he said, uh, oh yeah, that's right. I thought we were going this afternoon. I'm helping a friend move this morning, so I can't make it till this afternoon. I'm ready to go at nine o'clock, guys. So I'm gonna, I decided I'm just gonna go out and do a little recon action, narrow it down, save us both some time this afternoon so we can enjoy our weekend. I'm gonna go look at some trailers, narrow it down to the top three and then take him with me and then we can decide from there. So I showed up at our first place and they're closed. There's a note on the gate of the uh, of the business, and it says, "We're sorry, folks. We're closed uh, this Saturday. Uh, you know, for Christmas, we're uh, the employees have the uh, the weekend off. Uh, Merry Christmas, and we'll see you Wednesday." So I was like, "Dang it!" Uh, that was. I went to the first place, the the best trailer. I thought the best one uh, that I've been able to find on the online, and they're closed. So okay. I'm on the east side of Oklahoma City. It's about a 40 minute drive from my house. And I thought, well, I'll just I'll just head home and stop at one more on the way back. Uh, and I stopped at that place and they too are closed. So I looked them up on the internet on my phone and it says that they're open, uh, but they're closed. And guys, it's the 22nd of December. It's three days before Christmas. Of course they're closed. If I owned a trailer business, I would also be closed and I would let my employees have this weekend off uh, in time for Christmas and to enjoy it. Uh, that doesn't do me any good uh, right now because I really need to buy a trailer before the end of the year. Uh, we really need to buy a trailer before the end of the year. But every place that I called that was supposed to be open today has closed. So good for them. 
for taking care of their employees bad for me because this video went from a, hey, we're buying a trailer video to, hey, let's talk about buying a trailer video. Uh, actually, we're not gonna talk about it too much. We're gonna keep it fairly short. I just wanted to tell you guys what we decided on uh, and why we're not getting one today, like we talked about last week. Now listen, I did call our CPA and uh, I did say, hey, is this a good time for me to buy a trailer? And he said, this is a good time for you to buy anything that you can use for your business because we can write it off in your taxes this year. And he was telling me, so I, you know, I was curious about it, so I asked him and he, he was telling me about this thing called, uh, now I don't fully understand it and, and, and please look it up for yourself and talk to your CPA about it if you're planning on writing stuff off. Don't buy anything before you talk to your CPA, I urge you. I don't wanna, I don't wanna have any comments saying, Ben told me to buy it and I bought it and now I can't write it off. Talk to your CPA first. Rules are different in every state. State to state, some rules are different and businesses to businesses are different. LLC is different than a sole proprietor, uh, which is different than just some guy that does it after work as a part-time gig and he's not uh, reporting it. So just be very careful how you do it. Uh, talk to your CPA about it, uh, actually. But here's how Acme Moen, uh, here's, here's what we got from our CPA. We're an LLC and he said, he said, guy, this is your first year, so you qualify as a startup business this year, and as a startup business, you qualify for this thing called Section 179, in which, in one year, I can write off 100% of that trailer that I bought in the startup year. So our startup year is 2018. If I buy it in 2018, I can write it off 100%. Uh, now, some of the other ways to write it off would be depreciation, and then you spread that out over a couple of years. Uh, and really what it boils down to is how you guys did with your numbers this year and how it looks to be projected for the next three to four years. So we won't know how we're exactly how we're gonna write it off on my taxes, either section 179 or depreciation. We're not sure yet, and, that, and that's because my CPA hasn't done my taxes yet. He hasn't run my numbers. He doesn't know what we did last year as far as numbers go, uh, solid profit. And I don't either, to be quite frank with you. I know that we made a profit, and a pretty good one, but I don't know how much. Uh, so, uh, once the CPA is done with that, then that will determine, and because of what kind of uh, business we are, and because we are startup, it's gonna determine how he's gonna be able to write it off on our taxes. So talk to your CPA first. Hey, I'm gonna take you through a ride. Uh, we're downtown Oklahoma City. I thought it'd be kind of cool just to take you through uh, downtown Oklahoma City. It's not much, but it's something you haven't seen yet on our channel. And after that, I wanna talk about 10 other things that you can write off on your startup business. Uh, if you're a startup business, the 10, 10 things, uh, 10 important things to consider uh, for write-offs. So anyway, guys, enjoy Oklahoma City. After the ride through, after you're done looking at Oklahoma City, we're gonna talk for a little bit. Then we're gonna have the boy over. He's coming over this afternoon anyway uh, to spend some time. And then we're gonna do the fridge fame thing and hopefully we'll be able to talk KH into telling you about the hole in the ceiling that you saw in the last video.
Okay, guys, so uh, as you know, we didn't get our trailer today, uh, but uh, we thought we'd take this opportunity to share with you what type of trailer we're getting uh, and why we're getting it by the end of the year, and it's for that uh, tax break that we're going to get for buying it. And there's also uh, there's a couple other things that a lot of people that do start up businesses don't always think about, uh, things that they can write off on their taxes at the end of the year. The important thing, guys and it's hard to do, and I know, and I'm bad at it, uh, but I'm getting better, is to keep receipts for everything and keep notes. Staple those notes to those receipts to explain, hey, this receipt is when I took the trip to the GIE. You can write that off, guys. You can write that off on your taxes. It's a professional trip. Uh, let me put my, my, my ciphering and thinking glasses on, and we're going to go over a couple other things today that you can write off on your taxes as a startup company. Uh, did you know that you can write off professional fees? You know, I, I know a lot of you guys are pretty smart. You have to be to start your own business. Uh, you can't be a dummy. You have to be pretty smart, but you, you can't be smart about everything, guys. Uh, some things you need help with and you need to seek those professionals like me and my boy. We sought out the help of a CPA because those taxes are just, they're just overwhelming. Uh, you know, payroll, how much do we deduct? I mean, how much do we, you know, we, we needed advice and we got, and we found it through a professional uh, CPA. Uh, the best thing about that is though, guys, is you can write that off on your taxes too. By seeking professional help, you can write that off on your taxes and save yourself a ton. Uh, you know, what it costs you to pay, you know, what you pay him uh, to help you saves you even more money in the long run. So the smart move is to hire a professional uh, to do your taxes and, uh, you know, and, and manage your books if you can, if you're big enough. Now, if you're just, guys, if you're just starting out uh, and you got a couple of lawns, there's no need for that. Uh, if you're working under the table or you're doing a couple lawns after you get off work or something like that, there's no need to, for a professional. But the operation that, that the boy and I had last year uh, picked up rather quickly, and we, we found ourselves full-time awful quick and doing a, doing a lot of lawns. So the money was coming in, and we didn't have any time at night to go through it all, and uh, so we just shoved all of our receipts into a box during the, you know, during the season, and uh, we're handing it over to our CPA. What we pay our CPA uh, will save us money in taxes. Another one that's probably familiar to you guys as a write-off would be office expenses. You know you can write that stuff off. Uh, the paper that you use, uh, the pens, uh, you know, the, the, the physical calendars, the whiteboards, you can write it all off. Anything that has to do with a home office, you can write it all off. Uh, you can even write off a portion of your utilities because working in your office uses utilities and you can write a portion of that off. Now be careful. Uh, you know, don't take advantage of it because the IRS, if they think that you're trying to pull the wool over their eyes, they'll come after you. Uh, consult your CPA, but he'll be able to tell you how to prorate your, you know, uh, your utility bill to write that off for uh, tax expense. You know that you can write off stuff for you, like if you buy uh, uniforms and stuff like that, business cards and stuff like that, you can write that off. You probably already knew that, but did you know that you can write off your employees stuff too? Like if you buy them uniforms, if you give them a shirt or, you know, a uniform to wear, you can write that off. If you feed them, if you pay for their lunches, you can write that off. If you give them water, you can write that off. If you throw a Christmas party, you know, and you invite them over and you pay for everything, you can write that off as a business, business expense. As long as you call it, you know, in our case, Acme Moen, you know, annual Christmas party. As long as you title it something like that, you can write it off, guys. Uh, you know, for instance, I can write stuff off like payroll expenses. Like I use QuickBooks uh, to do our payroll and I can write that off every year. Another one that I didn't think of that my CPA brought up to me, he said, do you have a website? I do have a website. He said, you can write that off. You can write the whole thing off. You can write, uh, you know, your annual fee 
to have that website up and, and the recurring fee and the mailboxes that are associated with that that cost you money, you can write all that off. You can write off the software that you use in your business. Uh, YouTube is part of our business. And uh, the software editing program that I bought, uh, I'm going to be writing off this year. Um, I can write off some of my computer. If I wanted to buy a new laptop for the business, I could write that off. I could write off any software that I buy. For instance, I bought QuickBooks uh, and I pay for QuickBooks. I can write that off. Uh, anything that you can think of, software related, you can write off. You know, if you have Yardbooks or some of those other programs, uh, I know some of them are free, but there's also the ones that you can get that are paid. If you pay for those, you can, you can deduct that from your taxes every year. Travel. Travel you can write off. If you go to the GIE, hopefully we'll see you there in 2019. And hopefully you'll remember that you can write it off on your taxes. Uh, you can write off the airline tickets and the hotel rooms and the meals that you eat there. It's all business related expenses. If you're in the industry and you go to GIE, that's an industry related expense. You can write it all off. All of it. You can also write off your marketing and advertising fees. Uh, all these cards. And I didn't know this. All these cards, all of our EDDM cards, all of our uh, bandit signs that we have over there behind oh. KH. Hey, KH. Hey, baby. Uh, you hey. can write, hey, you can write all that stuff off on your taxes. It's crazy. Banking, banking and lending fees. If you finance something, you know that you can write off the interest on those fees. I didn't know that. Did you know that? No. I know that now. And we're going to be writing them off. We're going to be writing off. ATM fees. If you use the ATM and it charges you a fee, you can write that off. Uh, you can write it all off. Isn't that crazy? You can write off your credit card interest. You can write it off on your business, guys, all day long. You know, there's a ton of crap that you can write off on your taxes. Uh, I've barely scratched the surface. But I'm going to tell you. You're going to want to consult with a CPA, a tax attorney, or something like that to make sure that you're understanding the tax code correctly. Uh, because if you write stuff off and the IRS doesn't catch it this year, you can pretty much guarantee they're going to catch it sometime. And when they do, they're going to want their money back. So make sure the stuff that you're tax deducting is actually tax deductible. And the best way to do that is consult with a professional. And like I said earlier, guys, those professionals are also deductible on your taxes. You'd be dumb not to do it. So just do it. Uh, and remember what I'm telling you. Just do it. Just do it. <laughs> and, and don't believe, don't trust uh, tax advice from anybody on the Internet, including me. Uh, go to a tax professional, a CPA or somebody like that, because my my business is different than your business i'm an llc you might be a sole proprietor uh, i've got one employee you might have two or three or none i don't know uh, everybody's situation is different so just make sure that you're consulting somebody and you're not trusting what you're watching on youtube 100 percent i think what our job on youtube is point you in the right direction tell you what we've learned uh it's your job to make sure that it applies to you and that you're deducting appropriately and legally. Just how good do I have to be? That's the question, right? Write your comments below. <laughs> Quit looking at me like that. What is wrong with you? <laughs> it's a cute shirt, I think. Okay. Is that mistletoe below your boobies? <laughs> so. <laughs> I wonder what that means. <laughs> In fact, I might tell you that I'm wearing a pair of underwear that has mistletoe <laughs> at the very top on the waistline. Uh, you're funny. Anyway, guys, <laughs> Merry Christmas to you. So KH didn't get the trailer. Yeah. No trailer today. Everybody's wanting to go on uh, Everybody gave their employees holiday. everybody gave their employees this weekend off and I think that's great. Yeah. But we do need to get that trailer before the end of the year for the for the tax write off. Mm -hmm. Cuz that first year startup year 
yeah. we can use that section 179 to ride 100 percent of that trailer off if we wanted to really yeah according to cpa or he said maybe we would have to do a uh, deduction on it uh, yeah. you know depreciation is what he said okay. so we'll figure it out we're going to let it up leave it up to the cpa but i told him to do whatever it took to save us the most amount of money so that's what he's going to do mm -hmm. and when he tells us what he did i'll tell you but here's a fridge fame card Yay. that we got i grabbed the front the top one it's from mark's lawn care <laughs> alpena michigan all right okay let's see what what mark has to say and see if he right. what kind of card he's got for us Looks like a Christmas card. It's a Christmas card. It's a Christmas card. Any money in it? No. Nope. Card. That's Yay. better. That's better than money. <laughs> Mark's lawn care. Let's have a look at this card. And his card says, "You will like me mower." That's the first time I've ever heard that. That's pretty cool. Uh, and that's that's memorial. I'll, I'll remember that, and I'll remember Mark's lawn care because of that. You'll like me mower. Uh, weekly, every other week, once per month, one time only cuts. And then he's got his name and his, and his email address and his number. That's a nice little card. I like that. And we're going to put that up on the fridge fame, Karen, uh, among these other incredibly famous lawn care companies, <laughs> you know, we love our people on our fridge of fame, like Wyatt's and Red Rock, Brandon Crumley. Uh, KLC, Praying Manis, Wes's Lawn Mowing, my competition to the south down in down in the beautiful city, metropolitan area of Tuttle. Stets, Praying Manis, Lanier Lawn Care, Tony's Fence, Jay's Crazy Cuts, One Way and Eclipse. We're going to put them underneath Grass Monkey Lawn Care, right next to the handle. Yeah. Mark's Lawn Care. Every time I open this fridge, I'm going to see your card right there. There's your card, Mark. Thanks for the card. Mark, thanks for the card oh. and the Christmas card. And it says, peace and love this Christmas. May love and friendship light up your Christmas and bring you joy in the new year. Mark and Vicki, Mark's Lawn Care, Mark's Misfit World. Okay, Mark, so you're on the fridge of fame right under Grass Monkey Lawn Care. Uh, by the way... Uh, you're one of our favorite channels and we watch you every time you release a video uh, we enjoy your stuff uh, keep them coming uh, and if you want to look at uh, watch marks YouTube channel it's a good one I'm gonna put a link to it in the description below uh, go check them out subscribe to him and comment on his videos he's got some good stuff Merry Christmas to you we'll see you after Christmas uh, Wednesday after Christmas hopefully uh, We'll have a trailer by then, maybe, uh, definitely before the first. That's our plan anyway. Uh, but in the meantime, guys, enjoy your Christmas. Uh, we hope you're still making some money. Love each other. Definitely be loving each other this Christmas season. And peace. peace. Peace, guys. We'll see you on Wednesday next week.